Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Duke Oishi. And I'm Zuri Bender. In our show this time, we'll visit the Sustainability Unconference at ProtoHub in Kakaako. An unconference, as opposed to a conference, is unstructured, and the topics and speakers are determined by the participants themselves. The results are always interesting. It all started out at the premiere of our newest live stream talk show, Hub Talk, which was on February 3rd. It featured ProtoHub co-hosts Shauna Trevana and George Yarbrough. Here's a glimpse of the discussion on their show. Aloha and welcome to the very first episode of Hub Talks. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Shauna Trevena and I'm here with George Yarbrough. We are your co-hosts for the show and we are also directors of ProtoHub Honolulu. The ProtoHub is a co-working space that is a foundation and also a support uh, for the network of entrepreneurs and startups here in Honolulu. So we have all different types of small companies, large companies, medium-sized companies that are grown out of the ProtoHub and also use the ProtoHub for their office mm -hmm. and for the networking. Yeah, they do co-working, they come to events, they host events, they go to workshops, they host workshops, and there's all sorts of trainings uh, for everything that you would want to do to grow yourself and grow your business. So we're brand new. I guess you can call it brand new. Four months old. Yeah, September 15th is when we opened up, and we currently have about 140 members. And so mm -hmm. we're pretty excited to be here in Honolulu. We're pretty excited to be part of the community. We're excited to be a cornerstone in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't also have to be a member to be part of the Proto Hub. You can actually just rent the space for events. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. kinds of really cool events, actually. Conferences, yeah. So I think some of you went to the Grow Local in Small Spaces, GLIS, last mm -hmm. weekend. That's a great example of how to use the space. We are here with our guest, our very first guest once again. And we have Andrea Bertoli and Scott Cooney from Important Media. This Saturday, February 7th, from 9 to 5, we have the Sustainability Unconference. So, Andrea, I'm going to start with you. Yes, George. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm so excited really to be here excited with to you have guys you here. For show. I know, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. <laughs> um, actually, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But how you're the first person on our show? You're actually our first hub member. I'm so excited to be yeah. the first at both. So, yeah. what do you do at Important Media? So, for Important Media, I am a blogger and a site editor. So that means I do writing for um, two different websites that we have. One is called Green Living Ideas, and one is called Vibrant Wellness Journal, which I started many years ago. And um, I blog and share news about healthy living and green lifestyle, things like that. And then I'm also working with Scott to put together the Unconference. So I'm doing more of the marketing side of things, and Scott's doing a lot more of the logistical kind of planning things. And um, so far, it's come together really well. We've got an amazing list of sponsors and a great agenda for the day. And, so Scott will get to sure. get into more of the details so, about that. So important media. So the, the, both of you are, are pretty pretty high up there for the green movement here in Hawaii. I mean, I, you guys have been, your names are being thrown around everywhere, <laughs> especially, especially with this big conference coming up. So, and now we're big TV stars, too. Now so you're huge yeah. TV stars. We're so, lucky to know you. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, do you guys know the show? <laughs> um, but so really quickly, I know, I know um, Scott can talk more about important media. But um, for the people who don't know what important media is, can you quickly just say what it is? Sure. So Important Media is a network of about, how many, 15, 20, 20 websites that uh, cover all aspects of sustainable living. So it includes Clean Technica, which is the world's largest clean tech site. It includes Gas 2.0, which is um, a clean transportation site, hybrids and electrics and things like that. Um, everything from green crafting to green living to um, solar to bike, love. There's so many different things that we cover and um, it just offers people a chance to read about sustainability in all these, across all these different websites and really learn how sustainability can be woven into every aspect of our lives. Right. No, Any, anything you want to add, Scott? Sure. Uh, so, like Andrea said, it's, uh, um, being a generalist today is very difficult in terms of media. Uh, you have to compete with the CNNs of the world and that sort of thing. So for niche media companies, we try to angle towards uh, very specific niches. So, as Andrea said, we, we have a clean tech focused website where people who really are into clean tech can subscribe and get their daily news. Uh, we have a, a totally different website that's about eco fashion. And so, huh. people who are into that industry can really? subscribe to that blog and, and follow the news that way. Um, because those two things, uh, while they are aligned in the mm -hmm. grand spiritual sense of things, the two types of readers are exceptionally different types of readers. And so if they're just getting a generic news source, they're not likely to go back to it every single day. Shauna and George talked about the various events planned at ProtoHub. 
Among others, they mentioned the Sustainability Unconference set for February 7th. So, ThinkTech decided to visit the Proto Hub and attend the Sustainability Unconference that day. We were delighted and surprised by what we found. Proto Hub is a pretty large co working space at the Aulalike building at 458 Kiave Street at the intersection with Pohukaina, all at the core of Kaka'ako. The Proto Hub space is large, well planned, and well furnished. Here's what it looked like when we arrived. You can see it's perfect for co working and for creativity and collaboration. We just had the first session where we spoke. Um, Someone made a print presentation on the, the Sikh school, uh, sustainability kind of focused on uh, for kids. Uh, we heard someone speak about vegan health. Uh, we also heard about uh, budgeting and bookkeeping for small businesses. Uh, we have some workshops uh, later this evening on uh, community involvement as well as climate change uh, versus capitalism. So we have a wide variety of topics and these are all ideas that were um, presented on by the attendees. I was tasked with uh, putting my efforts into make it a zero waste uh, event. I have a little bit of experience. I'm with the TEDx uh, sustainability team. And so we've been using uh, DBED's green business events checklist as kind of a guide. So Scott and Andrea asked me to join the team in organizing. So we, we have a couple different focuses. You know, the, the whole event's about sustainability. And so we know we want to um, walk the talk as well. So that's why we have some um, really encouraging alternative transportation. K-Vibe came to help us out to do bike ballet, to encourage biking. So this is a really great way to encourage folks to bike and know that their bike's going to be safe. We don't have a lot of biking infrastructure around. And so I really appreciate you guys coming out here on a Saturday. Check us out at K-Vibe, Camp 4 Road. Come down if you need any bike parts, any help, anything. Shout out to my mom. Mom. If we're talking about trying to change the status quo, if we're talking about we want to be on a path of sustainability, if we want to do paradigm shifts, I think these forums that we are having these discussions in need to uh, reflect that kind of change as well. That's what's great about the unconference, allowing people a uh, safe space to step up and you know let them know that they have insight and perspective that's worth sharing. I think you know the idea of participatory action and activism and you know, setting that up in different ways. You know, maybe we don't have all these folks um, out there testifying at the legislature, but that's why we're creating these more grassroots forums to have their voice be heard. The Sustainability Unconference was created by Scott Cooney of Pono Home as an expression of that same creativity and collaboration. We have people coming from every range of background. We have people who are brand new to the sustainability thing all the way up to people who've been doing it for 20, 30 years. And the idea is that you can go to a conference and learn something from like one expert in one field, or you can come to something like this where you can learn pretty much anything peer to peer. Because the idea is that we, we each have a passion around a certain issue, whether it's biking or local farming or whatever it is, and we all have knowledge. And we don't think we have that much knowledge, but as soon as we start talking, people are like, what? Tell me more. And so it's really, this format is a great way to learn more stuff about um, really practical strategies. People just really passionate around the topic, waste, energy, food, water, uh, get together, got together this morning and formed little microgroups and uh, they're now all working on their business plans, which is kind of fun. So at three o'clock today, or maybe a little bit later, they're gonna be pitching these business plans in front of the whole group and then people are gonna vote and whoever wins will get a cash prize plus some other stuff. I've been doing kind of an unconference for like the last eight years and, but the crowd, that I usually work with is the tech tech community. Mm -hmm. And well, what I was um, kind of interested in is that where does a sustainability sort of community intersect with the tech community? Mm -hmm. And we've had these kind of similar formats where it's an unconference, people come in, they suggest their own topics, uh, all the like-minded individuals get together and, and talk about uh, maybe a, a topic of interest. And it's very, so very similar in terms of formats. Uh, but what I found interesting in, in this unconference was that the community is vastly different from the one that I'm dealing with. So there's a, I was uh, just telling um, Scott that the, the intersection between the tech community and this community, I think there's a crossover of maybe about 5% or less. So that's, you know, but it's a, what, what, I, what I find is that um, there are a lot of young people that are interested in, in these topics and if we can bring them together and then maybe together solve some problems. And what, uh, what, what I am mostly working in is the area of open data and looking at government making data more easily accessible. 
So it could be energy data, it could be tourism data, it could be uh, economic data, campaign spending data, or even infrastructure data. So like when, when you know, you talk about um, uh, transportation, you know, there's a lot of interest in, in biking and, and uh, so there's, there's data that you can get for transit data or bike rack data or, you know, trail data. So there's a whole bunch of areas that could complement with the tech community and the sustainability community. Can you talk a little about why this event was important for you guys to sponsor? Sure, definitely. Actually, Revolution has uh, been best known for our work in the solar photovoltaic space. We've installed thousands of systems here on Oahu and around the state. But we're also branching out into what's called the Revolution Smart Home, which is a new concept that kind of takes sustainability and conservation and energy efficiency all into account. And so we're bringing new products into the uh, market that will have a greater impact on people's uh, lifestyle as well as uh, help them save money and conserve energy. So we're not just doing PV anymore, but a lot of other products as well that are all geared around sustainability and a healthy and uh, environmentally beneficial lifestyle. So it's kind of a more inclusive uh, concept then. It's interesting. I think folks or businesses sort of had one focus, but when you're addressing something like sustainability, you kind of see the interconnectedness of everything and kind of the need to expand into different areas. Sure, absolutely. I mean, we're looking at not just the energy that we use, but the light that we that we bring into the home. It's brighter bright, you know, when you bring it from the sun itself and not just through a, a light bulb, but to have a natural lighting from a tube, for example, bringing sunlight into the home, um, bringing fresh air into the home so that we can get the ambient temperature from the outdoors into our internal uh, world in our home so we get the comfort level of sitting on your deck but you're inside your house with, by using a, a whole house fan which is a, a concept different from an attic fan a whole house fan actually pushes air up into the attic from uh, going through window space so um, it's creating a refreshing uh, air exchange within the home uh, every several minutes you're replacing all the air in the home so you get the ambient temperature of the home down to roughly what it's like outdoors and it feels comfortable without having to necessarily use air conditioning so much. One of the things I like about the unconference idea is that it's dynamic and so there's a lot of opportunity for people who have creative ideas to bring them up that might not have been given a, the floor at another conference type of an event but there's still ideas that have merit and so we want to hear about it from everybody. We want to know what people are thinking and we want to be part of that, that growing trend towards uh, environmental consciousness and sustainability. The thing about an unconference is that the topics to be discussed are decided by the attendees. The Sustainability Unconference had three sessions of open speakers featuring topics chosen by the attendees. You may not think that you're qualified to speak or run a session of an unconference, but you'd be surprised at the skills and experience that each of us has. I came here today to talk about community rights and home rule and to just give people a little bit of background about what is going on with community rights around the country, local ordinances. We see communities coming together to uh, address certain issues that really impact their communities. When we came in today, we had an idea of you know, what our areas are that we have knowledge about, but um, the community here that showed up selected the topics that they wanted to hear about. So um, for me, um, I'm an attorney, so this is a, a, a lot of people here are not attorneys. So I'm just here to provide a basic understanding of um, how the legal system works. So can you talk a little bit about the space and why it's a good kind of venue for an event like this? Uh, we're so excited because this is exactly why we created this venue. It has a lot of different areas for people to connect in. So we have meeting rooms and a lot of open space. So everyone comes here to be members and so it's a community. And then to actually have this sort of facilitated dialogue around all the issues that the community cares about decided by the community is really an incredible like synergy with what we intended this space to be for. Our theme was energy and we had a dozen people there and only a few of us knew each other so it was all new people and then we just started throwing out ideas if, if we were in different parts of the energy industry and were to put our minds together and say what's the one thing that could solve Hawaii's energy problems and uh, we came up with the idea that there it is such a um, actual wicked challenge which is actually a real word meaning so interconnected and complex that not one entity or, pro or solution can solve it that we need everyone working on it together collaborating knowing what each other is doing so we thought about an online platform that would crowdsource energy solutions 
solutions for Hawaii. And I think that's okay. You know, you're talking about trying to influence policy. Yes. You know, I think we're, we're always looking for different ways to get people engaged. And, you know, if that, if that doesn't mean you're going to go and testify at the Capitol, yep. trying to see examples of, you know, more grassroots level mm -hmm. of what people want to do or events they can go to that does have that kind of influence. Sure. You know, so we are trying to make sort of systematic change. Yeah, I think we have an opportunity for an incre in completely different type of engagement in the political process. Um, we have incredible um, representatives that want to bring good policy forward, but they need to prove that the people want it. When we went around the room, then we had probably about 20 different ideas, but then we were able to find trends and kind of related topics within those ideas. And then we just kind of went around as a group and started voting on the ideas. And so we didn't have any rules, you know, there wasn't any like guidelines presented to us, which was kind of neat. It was neat to see how quickly we kind of form, you know, formulated how we were going to do it. So we went through that process and we voted, and we kind of trickled down to an idea that, for the most part, was consensus, that we liked the mobile farmer's market concept. So not necessarily anything that, that's mind-blowing in the sense that it's not being done, but it's something that's being done in other parts of the country. And, but something that's not being done here in Hawaii. Okay, welcome everyone to this awesome session on climate versus capitalism and the future of Hawaii without oil. The reason I'm doing this recap is that last night I finished the very last page of Naomi Klein's last book, <laughs> This Changes Everything, Climate versus Capitalism. Um, it, she's written three major books. The first one was No Logo. Anyone read that or heard of it? It just, she really blew open um, globalization in the late 90s. It was a New York number <coughs> one bestseller. And then um, the next one was the shock doctrine, which was about neoliberalism and how it's been exported all over the world, that um, there's a purposeful process of creating um, chaos and shock in a country and then imposing um, the free market values into the political and economic system. Um, and then the third book, This Changes Everything, is really taking on climate change, which is one of the last things that I would have ever imagined myself talking about or caring about and which may seem unique or weird if you have known me about sustainability this whole time, but whenever I would do a survey of students across the UH system, the number one thing in sustainability they knew about was climate change, the number one thing they didn't want to talk about was climate change. The Western culture really believes in a dominant, you know, dominate nature worldview. So how can we extract, add value and resell? That's all embedded in capitalism. Neoliberals want the government to protect the market in favor of corporations where the free market is like, just let the market be free, let's not have anyone influence it and just see what it does. And no unconference goes without food. During the unconference, there were offerings of organic coffee, tea, and healthy foods. For lunch, we had some great donations from Whole Foods, Down to Earth, um, Kokua Market, and also Jennifer He. We had some veggie burgers, some quinoa, and kale salads. So much is going on in Kaka'ako, and so much of it is in the Proto Hub and the other co working spaces there. It's incumbent not only on the millennials and startups, but all of us to follow the action, enjoy the energy, and participate in the growth of this new and vital phenomenon in Hawaii. Tune in to Hub Talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com and find out more. Here today we learned um, a couple great ways to convey information. One is provide a forum where people can participate. You know, you do get something out of someone just speaking at you, but when you start to incorporate all the other voices and all the other perspectives of those attending, you have a much uh, wider canvas to pull from when you start making creative solutions to these complex, interconnected problems. We've learned that you don't, you know, instead of specializing in a, a conference or a speaker of, of business or nonprofits, um, we're bringing those folks together. We're having startup businesses or people that uh, matching those business makers up with folks in the community that are working on innovative and creative solutions. We've learned that bringing together the different sectors and industries um, the more we collaborate, I think the more creative we can tackle these problems.
Now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from noon to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. If you miss the show or want to replay or share any show, they're all archived on YouTube. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links or to join our email list and get these links and program advisories on our upcoming shows. We also invite you to be part of our live audience at our downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza. Contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. Raise your awareness in every way on ThinkTech. On February 26th, ThinkTech and the Grassroot Institute will collaborate to present another downtown forum luncheon panel program called Hawaii, the State of Liabilities at Laniakea. The panel that day will evaluate our unfunded liabilities and then discuss whether we have the fiscal and economic ability to pay them, how offshore influences will affect that, and what options do we have to deal with this. Join us for this important discussion of an issue that will affect every single one of us in the years to come. Be a part of the conversation and sign up to attend on thinktechhawaii.com. And now, here's this week's ThinkTech Commentary. I'm Donna Blanchard and this is a ThinkTech Commentary. Tetrachromacy is a condition that allows those possessing it to see 100 times more colors than the rest of us. Certain fish, birds, reptiles, insects, and about 12% of women possess it. The average person can see one million colors. Tetrachromats can see 99 million colors. This genetic condition bestows an extra cone responsible for the pigment reception. I originally heard about this phenomenon a few years ago on the fabulous WNYC radio show, Radio Lab. Something about that story moved me, but it wasn't until I read recently updated information in an article in the December 2014 issue of Vogue that I realized why this is so important. For starters, can you even imagine seeing more colors? One million is a lot of color to begin with. What else are these women seeing? Conchetta Antico is one of the 12%, and she's also a painter. Would Conchetta's paintings give me some clue as to what she is seeing? Well, she's an impressionist painter and not the most accomplished I've ever seen, but her work does have something special. She uses a lavish amount of color in interesting ways. If you're curious, you can find her paintings at conchettaantico.com. What I find really mind-blowing about this is that many tetrachromats not only don't know they have the condition, but they don't discern between colors to a greater extent than the rest of us. Not that they can't, they don't. They only perceive the colors that are more or less universally agreed upon by the rest of us. A young tetrachromat may color a sky and add pink where most people just see blue. Or they're confused when asked to get the red tablecloth because they see a piece of fabric that is also orange and yellow and blue. Eventually they're taught by the rest of us well-meaning trichromats that the blue sky doesn't contain pink and the red tablecloth is just red, silly. The parent of a tetrachromat may think they have a child with an overactive imagination. Uh, if we don't define the colors as we see them, if we don't teach them that the sky is blue and the tablecloth is red, are we denying them something unique and wonderful? I have to wonder. What if you told the child, perhaps you see pink, but I don't? 
I think our instinct to share the human experience would also eventually squelch the pink right out of that sky. Which leads me to a much larger question. How much of our perception, reactions, and invention is based on a belief system rooted in and shaped by well-meaning definition or our desire to fit in? It's worth some contemplation and willingness to fearlessly stare at the sky and look for what you didn't see before. I'm Donna Blanchard, and this has been a ThinkTech commentary. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech, but first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Zuri, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Jay Fidel does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. Definitely, Duke. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest a volunteer, a producer, or intern, and help us reach Hawaii. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech and for supporting tech, energy, diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone. And I'm Zuri Bender. See you next time. Oh.